Leonard, this idea of a final theory has has just fascinated and intrigued me for, for my whole life. I've, I've heard it, I've heard physicists talk about it, getting closer and then the further away. Uh, yeah. w w what is all this about a final theory of everything? What, what does that really mean? I don't know what it means. <laughs> um, my feelings are something like the following. We are very, very small creatures living in a very, very big world, not only in size and in shape, but in ideas and in, uh, uh, and my own feeling is we are very, very far from understanding the ultimate realities of the physical world. So far that I don't think we can reasonably hope to answer that question now or even what that question means. I think we are mechanics studying a great, big, monstrously big, complicated object. We tweak it, we push it, we discover little things about it. Are we anywhere as near understanding what it's good for, what it does, why it's there? No, we're not anywhere as near it. Well, we've certainly and made a lot of progress. We've made a lot of progress. We've I, understood that we've understood a lot of bells and whistles in this well, thing. I mean, w what is the concept of the theory of everything? To explain as much as possible in the laws of physics. We're not trying to explain biology and psychology and no. why you have such no. a pretty home. No. no. But <laughs> we are trying to explain uh, how all the diverse laws of physics can somehow be unified into as few as possible. That I mean, that's yes. the goal. That is the goal. And, and we've and made I, progress. We have made progress, but we may have made progress in understanding a tiny, tiny little region of something which is very, very much bigger. Uh, and that's my feeling. I have, and that's not a feeling I've always had. It's a feeling that I have now after the discoveries in cosmology, after the discoveries of the landscape, after being completely the thoroughly confused. Being all the different possibities all of string the wide theory. possibilities of string theory, after discovering how wrong-headed we could have been about black holes, and how very, very different the universe is than our ordinary brain is capable of cooking up. I think the only thing that I can say is that I personally feel we are very, very far away. Okay. What might we, be some things outside the parameter of what physicists are dealing with that, that uh, we can even begin to think about describing, which maybe are not being discussed today? Why the universe uh, was formed in the first place, perhaps not why, how. Uh, the very, <laughs> as has been expressed uh, by somebody or other, why there is something rather than nothing. Well, uh, that is indeed as, the ultimate question. Right, right. These but just because very, we very... can't answer that doesn't mean we can't answer a whole host of other exactly. kinds of questions. Exactly, exactly. We answer more and more and more, but then to try to guess at this point how close we are to the end, I don't think we can do. We'll know when we're at the end, when we're at the end. How will you know that? <laughs> Maybe we won't even know then. <laughs> Maybe we won't even know then. You're asking philosophical questions. And personally, for me, I was born without a philosophical gene. I was born with the gene of a mechanic. <laughs> I regard what we do as a form of mechanics like a car mechanic faced with a totally new kind of car that he's never seen before, a new kind of engine, what are they called, Wanko engines or whatever, yeah. that he's never seen before. It also happens to be very big and very complex. And so he first tries to figure out the carburetor, if in fact it has a carburetor. We make a little progress figuring out the carburetor and then the axle and so forth. But do we see the thing as a whole? Do we see the thing, its whole structure, what it's good for, why it's there? I don't think so. I don't think we're at that stage. Well, those stage. are very different kinds of questions. Uh, some are more macro questions of the whole thing. But, but uh, it, to look at the question, as many theoretical physicists would, is, is a little more limited than what you've said. It, it is to see, are there a few concepts of forces or particles or strings that can 
in, in the most simplest way, which simplicity is generally a virtue, uh, to explain the widest variety of things at the most fundamental level of physics. So we now have a theory which describes, mathematics describes, we don't explain, we don't understand why this is the right theory, but we have a mathematical description which is highly accurate, which can explain the elementary particles we see, atoms, nuclei, presumably if we could work it out, uh, molecules, and maybe even uh, go on to life, although that's, uh, that's very questionable. Not that it can, in principle can't understand life, but that in practice that we could carry it out. But it's going in the other direction, the smaller and smaller and the bigger and bigger, where we get way, way outside of the domain of parameters where experiment can tell us what's going on. Don't forget, the things that we've cooked up were cooked up to describe definite experimental mm -hmm. facts. Right. They were cooked up to describe the world as we see it. We're now entering into an age where we're trying to describe things much bigger than we can see and much smaller than we can see. Right? Are we gonna be successful? Are we gonna be able to figure it out? Will we have enough experimental data to figure it out? Will we have enough experimental data to penetrate to the point where not only can we say the world of atoms and molecules is this way, but the reason that the world of atoms and molecules is this way is because. What we've discovered so far is, is, is indeed the results of experiments. What right. we've, in, in our macroscopic world and using our accelerators probing down to the atomic right. and nuclear level with our telescopes seeing the universe. But now, as you said, at both scales, we're starting to be yeah. limited. Yeah. Can we probe down to the level of strings at the Planck length? It seems we impossible. Don't know. We don't know. Well, no, 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 we don't, very know. we don't know. We don't know. And can you go into, on the yeah. other end, can you go to so, multiple universes and pocket universe by definition outside of our light cone and ability so, to communicate? Right. So at both ends of the spectrum, the ability to, to do experiments or observation is, is, is much right. more limited than you've been in the past. Right. So in the past, there were people who told Christopher Columbus, don't go more than 50 miles from the shore because you'll get lost. Don't go more than 50 miles from the shore because you'll come to the end of the earth, terra incognita, and so forth. It was probably good advice. I would have given my own child the same <laughs> advice. Don't go more than 50 miles from the shore. But if nobody tries to go more than 50 sure. miles from the shore, sure. we won't find out sure. what's there. Yeah. So the metaphor today is I don't know how to go beyond 50 well, miles from the shore. I'd love right, to, right. I want to, but I, I don't know right. how to do it. So the answer is we don't know what we can do. Human beings have never known what they can do until they tried to do it. And every single case that I can think of, when somebody said it must be possible to do this or that, everybody said it's not possible to do this or that. We don't know what we can do, and that's the bottom line, that we don't know if society supports us in trying, we will probably go a lot further. If young people continue to try to, to, to push the barriers, we'll go further. But where we'll get to, what we'll find, uh, will we find China and India, or will we find America, or will we find the edge of the earth, or will we find sea serpents? There's no way to know now.